Hey, Marilyn, I've done Spider. Hey, sorry I didn't get that video to you uh, on Friday, but uh, we were out and with a couple people on Friday and to get back to office still really late. So here it is. Um, this is a landscape database that I have, uh, and I'll show you the estimating first. So I have a couple of different estimates. Uh, these are all landscape jobs, actually. Um, so the one I want to look at is this uh, Welsh residence. And just ignore this for a second. I have some prices I have to get updated. But um, so the way this estimating works is if I want to go, I'm going to plant trees as an example. I have a lot of ways to look at it. I'm going to look at it like this real quick and um, shoot, cover some of these columns up a little bit so you can see everything. Um, and you always can hide columns, so I'll have to do that real quick. It's always nice to show you how easy these things are to do. So I don't care about this one. I don't care about the formula. I don't care about the task. I don't care about the inventory location. Uh, we'll leave the rest of those in there. Anyway, here's the way it works. So to plant a tree, and you know more about this than I do, I'm sure, uh, this is a 36-inch box tree. So in order to quote somebody a tree and plant the tree, I need to buy the tree, right? I need so many hours to, to load it or unload it. I need so many cubic yards of wood savings put around it. I need so much fertilizer, and then I need a backhoe to help with the planting. So, every time I plant one of these, I need one hour, one tree, three hours, three quarters of a cubic yard, etc., and then ten fertilizer tablets. So, it doesn't make any difference. If this job has 13 and the next job has three, they just change this quantity and it extends out these quantities correctly. And then you can put your overhead and profit rates on it. This is the this is the profit you have on it. This is the extended price uh, with the cost and the profit. This is who I'm going to buy it from. And this is the item. We call them cost codes. You call them items in QuickBooks. This is the item that I'm going to charge it to. So here's what happens. I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to show you one more before I show you how I work this. Now let's just go to um, irrigation. And so on this job, I need a 12-station controller, right? So I have to buy one controller. I need eight hours to, to wire it and program it, and I need a bunch of fittings at $25 to lump sum item. Down below, um, in here, I have a six inch pop up. I need to have 76 of those. So I need one of those. I need a quarter of a, almost a quarter of an hour to do that. A nip, couple of different size nipples, uh, an elbow, two more L's, half inch L's, and a little nozzle on the top and then a screen. So price all that stuff in. I need 76 of them. At this cut point, it's going to be about $11.05 to do that. Anyway, that's how we do it. So you're, all you're doing when you're doing a new job is putting in quantities for each of these items. And these can be, uh, take ours and adapt them to yours, your, to your pricing, whatever, or you can build your own. But here's where you want to do it. Now I can take all the cost budgets to my budget by job, by item. I can print a proposal. I can print a purchase order to buy all those materials, and I can create a service work order if it's a real small job to go out and do that work. I doubt that you have subcontractors working for you, but if you did, you could actually create a subcontract. So that's our estimating. Pretty nice. Uh, and I, like I said, once you get this built, then every job after that just becomes really simple because you seriously, you're just plugging in quantities and maybe checking to make sure your prices are still good. I'm going to close that real quick. Uh, two cost reports, uh, and the one you wanted to look at um, was hours. And so um, I have to see if I have, actually, you know what, um, I'm going to change over to a company I have better data in. Uh, but those, that's how the estimating works. I'll go here. And then in uh, here, I have an hours report. So here, these are just, it happens to be a labor framing company, but it would be your cost codes or items here, the hours that were budgeted in your estimate, the hours that have been processed through payroll so far, and then once a week, you're going to come in here and update this column. Like on this item, I'm actually, let's make this a bad job. I'm only 45% complete, okay? I come up here. And yeah, it's already done. Right, here we go. They changed the buttons up here. Um, used to be easier to see the calculator, but anyway. So 
I had 52 budgeted. I've spent 36. I'm only 45% complete. So now it tells me I need 45 hours to finish it, and I'm going to be 21 hours uh, over budget. So that's the hours report, the one you asked to see. The other one that most of our clients use uh, is this one here. Uh, I'll just look at this item. Again, your items would be here, like planting trees, shrubs, sprinklers, or whatever. Um, so I budgeted 36000 I had 480, you know, that could have been the 480 sprinkler heads to do, whatever it is. This is what I spent either in accounts payable, inventory transfers, equipment cost, or payroll cost. This is how many units I have complete. So I budgeted $77 a unit to do. It's costing me $69, so I'm $7 under budget. Uh, this is what it's going to cost to finish the job, and this is how much under or over budget I'm going to be. So once you start getting some history in here, and, and again, these are bigger numbers than you're probably ever going to see on yours. Uh, but the bottom line is, I can come in here and look at 36-inch uh, trees for the last couple jobs and say, hey, you know what? We were budgeting $28 to, you know, to plant them, and it's actually costing us $38. Well, now I can tweak that estimate, include the 38 which is just going to get you better estimates uh, as you go forward. And so let's see what else we have. Let's go to accounts payable real quick. Uh, so when I set up a vendor, I have one set up here, so hang on a second. When I set up a vendor, down here in the bottom right-hand corner is a thing called certificates. So if I click that, this is where I track workers' comp, general liability, contractor's license, uh, auto may be another one you track. Uh, some of our clients track businesses' licenses because the cities want, you know, require that, and so you could actually track to see if they have a, a valid uh, business license as well. So what this says here is when I enter uh, a PO for this vendor, it's going to warn me that the insurance has expired. Uh, when I enter an invoice for that, for that vendor, it's going to warn me again. And here, I can make this a no. I really don't want you to do that. Uh, this is going to stop payments. When I go do my check selection, kind of like you do in QuickBooks, to select the vendors for the week, uh, it's not even going to include this vendor in the accounts payable listing because they have invalid insurance. It'll tell you that they've been excluded. But you, you, you don't really want to override that uh, until they get you the insurance information. So that's how we track insurance. Pretty simple, actually. Um, and, and it's just right there in the background. So you don't have to do anything. Uh, you just do it. One of the things you had checked also was uh, the burden. So yes. So when you charge labor to the project, uh, it automatically includes all of the burden. Your FICA, your FUDA, SUDA, workers comp, uh, their health insurance, 401k if you have one. Um, see what else you might have uh, if you have like a miscellaneous accounts or something uh, that you do we would have that as well um, so equipment is the next one that you had checked and again this is I'm just kind of glossing over some of these things I, I mean we can go into more detail when we come out there I just want to see uh, today if this all makes sense for you and that's where the reason for the for the video here so uh, you know if I have a piece of equipment I can put in the description the date I purchased it just generic information uh, but then I can also, if I'm financing it, where the interest expense goes, if I'm depreciating, where depreciation expense goes. Um, if we, and this is something you can add later, but if you kind of figure out how much that piece of equipment actually costs you to own, uh, and then we set up a billing rate to charge that to your project so that the company's collecting revenue in one place, but actually expensing the equipment cost to each of the individual jobs. So down here in the bottom, there's tabs. These are everything that's been expensed to this piece of equipment since we've had it. Um, so if I want to look at this, you know, I did a, a hose repair for $1,200. If I double click this, it'll take me back to accounts payable. I don't want to do that, but I could go actually go back to the accounts payable invoice to see what that is. If you have your own mechanics or guys working on your equipment or making repairs and you want to track the cost of those, then you can actually charge your time card uh, to that piece of equipment just like you would charge to a job. So over to service, which is really a, one of our powerful modules. Um, what you get, bottom line here, is what you're going to get out of it is you're going to get a dispatch board for as many people, and these are probably your foremen or, or their superintendents that run your crews or lead men. So I can look at their schedule, uh, and I can look at five days, uh, and it allow me to create a work order. So if somebody were to call in right now and say, hey, I've got a sprinkler repair that I need, I can look at the calendar and see if I have somebody available for that. And, you know, right here, uh, it's going to take two hours. So I'm going to create that. 
close this real quick. Now, I've started a new work order uh, with today's date on it, scheduled for today, scheduled for 845 to 915 because uh, that's what it was with a half hour of travel. Now I can start filling out the other information. So who, who is the client? I only have one client that I can remember, so Jessica. So you'll notice when I typed her in, it automatically comes up and tells me she has an outstanding balance and she has a past due balance uh, outstanding. A description, the job number if, if it needs one. But the nice part is uh, I can start this out as a quote. When they say, yeah, go ahead, that's fine, let's do it, I can turn it into a work order. And once I'm done with that, I can come back in here and fill in the invoice details of what I did. Like, you know, I had one hour, two hours of labor, uh, one controller, uh, six inches of pipe, whatever it is, and price that out and create the invoice directly from here, which is nice. Um, the other thing we can do and uh, is create routes and contracts. So if I created this as a contract, uh, if I go to billing here, uh, right here in this box, it's saying, okay, what's the start date of this contract? You know, and I'm going to make this 09 slash 01 slash 12. Uh, it's going to expire on 09, oh, whoops, 831 slash, whoops. You can tell typing is not my, uh, one of my skill sets, uh, 13, right? The next bill date is do whatever day you're going to bill them. And how often do I want to bill them? I want to bill them monthly or bi-monthly or quarterly. You set that up as whatever fits you best. And then at the end of each month, you'll just, or beginning of each month, it's up to you, you'll create all of the invoices that have a bill date within this contract range that fit one of these criteria. So they all come out automatically. So you don't have to remember to do it. As long as it's on a billing cycle, uh, we create those as a recurring billing. Um, you know what? I want to show you one more thing here. Uh, so Jessica actually has multiple locations. So if you have a client, and I don't know if you have any commercial clients that you do, but if they had, you had a client, like an AM, PM, for an example, and you did a lot of those stores, the, the landscaping on that, then you list, could list all of the stores all the way down here, the location, you know, who the contact is, what the phone number is at location, uh, and then you could have all of those in there so that when they call, you would know where to dispatch somebody. So uh, that's a work order system. works really well. Um, I'm assuming you're on QuickBooks. I think that's what you told me. Yet we can convert a lot of your data from QuickBooks. So that's something to keep in mind. And um, I'm thinking of trying to think of uh, something else here. Um, anyway, pretty much it, Marilyn. I, I wanted to just kind of introduce you to this, what it looks like. Uh, the new version has this in it, these icons now. So if I'm a project manager for you or I'm in charge of projects, uh, this is probably what my screen would look like. You wouldn't even have this over there. You would just have this on your desktop, your project manager would. So he can look at uh, a project. He could look at, put in a new cost code. He could enter a budget. He could create a purchase order. He could look at the schedule for your large projects. Uh, he can look at a bunch of cost reports that here. And I can add these. These are all easy. If I click here, I can take this off or I can move it around. Uh, I can do a lot of things. You know, if he doesn't do some of these things, just don't take this one off uh, and delete it. But this becomes totally customizable by the user. So I'm going to uh, cancel this, go back to the menu, and um, what have you. So it, you can see general ledger, just like QuickBooks, uh, full accounting reports, accounts receivable, uh, full accounts payable, which obviously does the tracking of insurance, which is nice, payroll. I didn't see in the notes, but if you had to do certified payrolls on any projects, it will do certified. It does all your workers' comp reports, all of your filings, 941s, W-2s, uh, DE-6, and a couple others that I can't think of right now, but it does all those. Uh, project management includes um, change orders, purchase orders, subcontracts, cost of complete analysis. And I didn't know if you needed this. This is the small add-on that we have. But this is where you could do RFIs, transmittals, submittals, daily field reports, and a punch list. Scheduling comes with it. It's like a Microsoft Project uh, Gantt charts. Uh, and then inventory, if you buy service receivables or work orders, uh, inventory is included with it. So anyway, uh, it was meant to be an introduction. If any of this makes sense, let us know. We'll come out and see you. Feel free to pass this around to other people in your company. But uh, my name is Dennis. Phone number here is 951-699-6900. So 951-699-6900. And... Uh, just give us a call if you have a question or if you want us to come out there and see you. Thank you.